This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, your home for IT training products. Bridges and switches both work at the data link layer of the OSI model, which makes them layer two devices or L2 devices. And of course, at layer two, we're concerned with MAC addresses. And both a bridge and a switch will read a MAC address and they will create a MAC address table. And that's going to allow that device to help send frames to the proper destination in a more efficient manner than just flooding them by just sending them out all ports at all times. And you really see very few bridges in today's networks, especially with the advent of layer three switches. And if you're kind of skipping around in the videos a little bit, just to remind you, a layer three switch is a switch that is primarily a switch, but it has routing capabilities as well. So bridges still can serve a purpose though. Theoretically, they can connect networks using different media. That is, uh, if we had token ring segment on one side of the bridge and an ethernet segment on the other side. Um, they're protocol independent or protocol ignorant, depending on uh, whose documentation you're reading. And I will tell you that sounds great, but it's my experience that in the real world that doesn't always work terribly well. And it can be a very difficult configuration to get to work. So while theoretically, again, bridges can connect networks using different media, um, in the real world that doesn't always work terribly well. Bridges also will not forward data across the bridge, so to speak, from one segment to another unless the destination address is valid and actually requires it. And I want to show you what a bridge looks like in network documentation. And that's the universal symbol for a bridge. You should be prepared to see that on any certification exam and know what those devices are connected to. And you've already seen in a couple of other places that this is what a switch looks like. You should certainly be familiar with that by this point. And it's, it's not that bridges are really bad at their job or, or evil or anything like that. It's just that switches, frankly, are better. They can operate at higher speeds. They do offer a great many more options. If you go out to Cisco's website, look in the documentation, and just look at what a regular switch can do, not even a layer three switch, you've got a tremendous number of features that you can use and bridges are not going to offer all of those. And of course, as I've mentioned a couple times here already, switches can perform routing as well as switching if it's a layer three switch. On an exam, if, it, if they just talk about a switch, they're talking about a pure layer two switch, just as if you're reading documentation, if it just says switch, it's a layer two switch. Those switches, those layer three switches used to be called routers, um, but you really don't hear that term very often anymore. It's combination bridge router, but in case someone mentions a router, I want you to know what they're talking about. Now, there are two rather confusing facts regarding switches that I want to mention here again that I did mention in another video as well, that MAC addresses are called physical addresses also because they physically exist on the NIC. They're burned in, which gives them another name, burned in address. But whether it's a physical address, a MAC address, burned in address. It's still a layer two address. Physical addresses have nothing to do with the physical layer of the OSI model. Now, just as you heard several different names for MAC addresses earlier in the course, you'll also hear the MAC address table called several different things. It could be called a MAC address table, a bridging table, a switching table, a physical address table or a layer two address table. They're all the same thing. Bridging table, you don't hear as much as you used to anymore because frankly, bridges are just about gone out of today's networks. But you'll still hear it on occasion. So whether it's MAC address table, bridging table, switching table, I don't care. It is a MAC address table. They are all the same things. But no matter what you call it, you need to know how switches build that table and how they use it to determine the appropriate action to take with an incoming frame. Now, the example we're going to walk through in a moment is an illustration of how a switch builds a MAC address table dynamically. You can make static entries in a MAC address table. You really don't want to do that. 
this is one of those situations dynamic is much better than static because as hosts are moved around, if we're using dynamic learning on the switch, they'll learn the new location of the PCs, of the hosts. But if you do it statically, then you got to go to the switch every single time a host ever gets moved or changed and change configuration. And frankly, you and I both have better things to do. Before we take a look at the example, just want to remind you that by default, both bridges and switches forward broadcast. This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, network admin's number one choice for professional IT training, where you'll find videos on Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, CompTIA, and more. Come visit us today at www.trainsignal.com.